Hello everyone and welcome. In today's video, I'm tackling another build commission. This time the customer wants a 124 scale RC replica of the Mustang from the 1993 film Menace to Society. From my extensive and exhaustive research, aka taking a trip over to the Internet Movie Cars database, it appears to be a stock 91 or 92 deep emerald green Mustang GT convertible with wire wheels. So not only should this be a simple, straightforward build, but I'm also a huge fan of the Fox Body Mustangs, so I was very excited to dive into this project. Before I begin, I want to remind everyone who's interested in doing a similar build that I've included links to the products and STL files used below in the description. So if you'd like to build a car like I am here, be sure to check them out. Let's start by having a look at the model kit that I'll be using for this build. It's a Revell 1992 Ford Mustang GT convertible lowrider, which should look pretty much visibly identical to the car from the movie, minus the crazy wheel spacing of course. I believe this specific lowrider Mustang kit was originally released in the early 2000s, and it's been reissued a couple times with different box art and decals. The latest being in 2006, so these models have been long out of production, but can still be found without too much trouble, albeit you might have to pay a premium as I did to get this one. Let's take a look at what's inside. First impressions of the kit are that it looks great. Everything looks well molded and there is some fantastic detail. It would have been cool if they included the tires and decals needed to make a stock Mustang, but at least the wire wheels they included are pretty nice, though I will be printing my own. I can tell you from the future that the car went together quite well and with all the parts fitting nicely together. Really can't complain about this kit, I definitely recommend one if you can get it for the right price. So with the model kit unboxed and everything looking nice, let's move on to the chassis. I'll be using a FP UC1 chassis for this build for several reasons. First it's inexpensive and easy to print while still being a lot of fun to drive. It's also brutally simple and easy to assemble with basically nothing to maintain, and it sits very low which will give me more room for the interior and the electronics that will go below it. That's great for this build since it's a convertible. The only downside is that just like with the RX-7 I built a while back, the chassis will be somewhat visible below the body as it will sit below the rocker panels. With all the chassis parts I'll need printed, I used one of the hardware kits we offer which contains all the screws, axles, and bearings I'll need to build the chassis. I then begin by assembling the front end. The wire wheels on the movie car stick out a little beyond the fenders, so I'll be pushing the wheels out further than where they would be if stock. Though I can't go too far out, or else I'd have to remove quite a bit of material from the wheel arches to make room for the wheels to turn left and right. I then assembled the rear motor and axle mount assembly and positioned it so the wheelbase is correct for this body. I did need to install a longer rear axle shaft, which is what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. 
I also needed to remove some sections of the front inner fenders and firewall so the front of the body can sit low enough. Already the fitment is looking pretty good, so next I wanted to start test fitting the interior to see what modifications would need to be made. I also started to brainstorm where I was going to place all of the electronics. Again, we offer a convenient compatible electronics set linked below. Before I go any further, I wanted to install the steering linkage and steering servo since I knew some modifications to the body and interior would be necessary for them to fit. Fortunately, I didn't need to do a ton of hacking, I just marked a few areas that needed removed and then cut them out. I really like using a hot knife for some of these cuts. Again, not too much hacking was necessary thanks to the low sitting chassis. Once the seats and dash are in, it will be less visible than it is here. I decided to go one size narrower in the front. I was a little concerned about the clearance that the front wheels would have to steer, so I made the front just a little narrower. I also cut off the excess front axle length and glued the wheel mounts into place. Here's a look at the completed front end. I next finished up the rear by mounting the motor and positioning the rear wheel mounts. There's just enough room to squeeze the ESC between the bottom of the interior and the chassis. I did need to remove the case and then began the fun process of figuring out how I was going to route all of the wires and make it all fit. I did need to remove a chunk of the rear seat so the gears will have enough room. I also sanded and trimmed a few spots on the bottom of the interior tub just to get every millimeter of clearance that I could.
here's where the chassis and car is at so far. The last thing to mount is the receiver, which will go under the hood. I just used a little super glue to keep it solidly in place on the very front. If you're wondering where the battery will go, you'll see in just a bit. I plan on using Velcro to secure it to the body just under the trunk as there's tons of room there. With all of the electronics in place, I'm now ready to make the body mounts. I used styrene tubing and magnets just as I've done on previous projects. With the magnetic mounts, all it takes to remove the body is just gently pulling it off. So far, so good. At this point, I was eager to drive the car for the first time. This is the AX5S transmitter I'm using for this build. It's just a basic three-channel transmitter that will work well for this car. It's definitely more of a budget transmitter, but it feels pretty good, and I like the throttle limit switch that it has on the top. I plugged both the ESC and steering servo into the correct spots on the receiver, and then powered on the car. As you can see here, I needed to reposition the servo arm as it was way off center, but after that the car was ready to drive. I will need to do a little work around the wheel arches to make enough room for the wheels to turn to full lock, but at this point I was ready to do a quick test drive. As you can see, the car is working great. I installed the two rear motor mount screws and tidied up the wires with some zip ties. At this point, the chassis is complete and fully functioning, and the body mounts are in place. 
All that's left to do now is to paint the car and finish assembling the body, which I'll be covering in the next video of this build series. Make sure you subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, so you don't miss the conclusion of this build. You can also become a channel member by clicking the join button below, or becoming a member on Patreon for early access to videos and other perks, as well as helping make more videos like this possible. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello everyone, in today's video I'll be continuing the 124th scale Menace to Society 1992 Ford Mustang GT convertible build that I introduced a couple weeks ago. As always, I'll be sure to include a link to this project's playlist below in the description if you'd like to watch the first part of this series. In the last video, I assembled the 3D printed chassis, built some body mounts, and wired all of the electronics. In today's video, I'll be doing some bodywork and begin getting all of the parts painted, so let's dive right in. So with the car driving and the body mounts in place, all that's left to do at this point is the fun cosmetic stuff. As you might recall in the last video, I mentioned how the front tires were rubbing against the body while turning left and right. To fix this, I used a rotary tool and side cutters to carefully remove some material around the front and rear of the wheel arch. Perfect. I made sure to clean up the edge a bit with some sandpaper. After that, I started sanding all around the body, removing any imperfections such as mold lines and areas where the parts were attached to the tree. The body is very well molded, so not a lot of work is required, but there are some prominent mold lines in spots such as the front fenders that need to be removed. This work will improve the appearance of the finished car. Next, I sanded the entire body with 600 grit sandpaper to help with paint adhesion. I also cleaned up the edge that I cut to remove the inner fender and firewall section. Also, I made sure the hood and front bumper fit well and don't require any more work. Here I'm deepening all the panel gaps using a hobby knife and pick tool. I used a brush to remove any bits of plastic stuck in the panel gaps. After that, I glued the front bumper to the body, using plenty of glue to make sure it doesn't come off while driving. I also test fit the headlights. As I've done before, I wanted to sand the transition between the body and front bumper to make it more flush, since the bumper is sitting a little low. Here's what the body looks like so far. The body is looking great overall, however the hood didn't want to sit quite right, and it's also very loose fitting, so I decided to use magnets to make a sort of hood latch as I've done on previous builds. I made some holes for the magnets to fit into and then glued one magnet to the body and one to the underside of the hood. Here's what it looks like completed. It helps keep the hood in place and prevents it from falling off. 
I won't be adding a detailed engine bay to this car, however one could be added in the future if desired. So that's the main reason I didn't want to just glue the hood to the body like I've done with some cars in the past. With the body prepped for primer, I moved on to getting all of the other parts that I'll be using, like the mirrors, convertible top, luggage rack, and so on. These parts needed just a little work as well, but it wasn't long before they were ready. After one final pass with some 600 grit sandpaper, the body and all additional parts were looking great and ready for the next step. I washed all the parts and let them dry before applying primer to the body and paint to the other parts. While that was drying, I turned my attention to the interior. I already modified the interior to fit over the chassis in the previous video, so all I needed to do was ensure everything fits, clean up any rough edges, and assemble the seats. I glue the two halves of the seats together, and later I'll be adding filler around the edge where the two parts meet, so the transition is smooth. I applied it pretty thick, so I'll be coming back later to sand it once it dries. The rest of the interior is looking good, and is ready for paint. By this time the primer was dry, and I could do some sanding. The primer is nice for identifying any sections of the body that might need some more work. Fortunately everything was looking good, so all I did was wet sand the entire surface with some 600 grit sandpaper to prepare it for paint. After another wash, I applied the paint. Switching back over to the bench, the filler was dry, so I sanded it down to make a nice smooth transition between the front and back half of the seats. Once that was done, I applied primer. I was going to paint the seats right after the primer dries, however I remembered that I'm probably going to need to cut the driver's seat some so it clears the steering servo, so I'll be waiting until I confirm the driver's seat fits before I paint the seats. Switching gears again over to the wheels, I sprayed some chrome paint onto each and gave it plenty of time to dry.
I then hand painted the center's gold. The result turned out looking great. I finished by stretching over a set of Make It RC 17x26x8 silicone tires. The body turned out very nice with the green paint. It's not perfectly smooth, but once I give it time to fully dry, I'll be wet sanding the paint and applying a clear coat, as well as painting the lower trim silver, which I'll be covering in the next video. Here's a look at everything so far. Lots more details to come, but of course I want to give the paint plenty of time to cure. I'm really excited to see this car completed, and I hope you are as well. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, as I'll be posting the final video of this build in a few weeks, which I think you all are really going to enjoy. You'll find links to the parts I'm using below in the description, if you'd like to do a similar build yourself. Also, if you'd like access to exclusive content and early video releases, as well as help make more content like this possible, consider becoming a member on Patreon. Again, I'll be sure to include the link below. That's all for today's video, thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hello everyone, in today's video I'm going to be completing the 124 scale Menace to Society 92 Mustang Lowrider build. For those not familiar with this build, you can check out the playlist linked below in the description which contains the first two parts of this build series. In the first video I built the chassis and modified the Ravel model kit to fit on top, and in the second video I painted all the parts. Today I'll be adding the final details, assembling the car, and doing some driving. If you'd like to do a similar build yourself, be sure to check out the description below this video for links and more information. With that said, let's dive back into this build. So as you can see, I've got the body painted green and have given the paint plenty of time to dry. The paint doesn't look too bad at this stage, but there are some imperfections and orange peel, so I decided to wet sand the paint before applying the clear coat. This is a bit tedious and you need to be careful not to sand through the paint. Also, the paint is going to look worse before it gets better. I'm only focusing on larger, flat areas where the orange peel would be most noticeable. I did use some polish as well, which I thoroughly washed off before applying the clear coat. Before I applied the clear coat, there were a few details that I wanted to paint first those being the blue oval emblems and the 5.0 badges. Unfortunately, this kit does not include factory style decals for these emblems. While I had the blue out, I also painted the emblem on the steering wheel. They turned out nice enough, so I applied the clear coat. I'm using Rust-Oleum Gloss Clear. I gave the clear several days to fully cure, and the result turned out pretty nice. I did do a little hand polishing before thoroughly washing the body and began masking the lower section for the silver paint that I'll be applying. It was a little tricky in a few spots to mask, but I did the best I could. I really like the two-tone look these cars had. I carefully sprayed some silver paint around the bottom, making sure not to get any past the masking.
The result turned out looking great. I next masked off this upper section which I'll be painting flat black. This includes the trim around the doors and the windshield. To add some remaining details, I used a brush. These details included the door handles, door and trunk locks, cowl vent, windshield frame, and the inner fenders. The body is already looking better with these details added. I next carefully painted the headlight buckets chrome silver. Using the same chrome silver paint, I backed the lower fog lights and tail lights. I test fit the headlight lenses and figured out that I needed to paint the outer edge of the headlight bucket silver as well, so no green is visible through the headlights. I removed any imperfections from the headlight lenses and then painted the outer sections using clear orange. As I mentioned in the last video, I wanted to wait to paint the seats because I wasn't sure if I was going to need to modify them so they'd fit. I didn't need to make any cuts, so I applied the same gray paint that I used for the rest of the interior. I already painted the soft top, but I also wanted to paint the convertible top boot so that the customer has a choice of which to have on the car. To help differentiate the windshield wipers from the cowl vent, I painted them semi-gloss black. By this time the paint I applied to the lights was dry, so I could glue them to the body. After test fitting them, I used a black sharpie marker to add a black edge around the outside. I also wanted to add the rear license plate holder, which I sanded and painted flat black. I used micro crystal clear glue, which dries clear so it won't be visible underneath the lenses. I used the same glue to secure the windshield and back window.
The paint on the rear license plate holder was dry, so I could add the license plate decal to it and mount it to the car. After that, I glued all of the parts that go on the trunk. Next, I glued on these little scoop things that go on the lower trim. Once those were on, I wanted to add the rear view mirror. I painted everything except the mirror flat black, as you can see here. I also assembled the side view mirrors and glued them to the body. With the body pretty much completed at this stage, I moved on to adding details to the interior. I'm always glad to see a kit included an instrument cluster decal as this one does, so I slid it onto the dash. I also hand painted some flat black details using a brush and using reference material as a guide. After that, I glued each piece to the interior tub. I'm really happy with how the interior turned out, as it has some nice detail. The Ravel included the older style, no airbag steering wheel, which I don't believe is correct for a 92 model year Mustang. After test fitting the body and interior on the chassis, I noticed that I needed to slide the interior slightly more forward so the wheels line up better in the wheel wells. After fixing this, I glued the interior to the body. The car is really coming together nicely, I figure now was a good time to swap the placeholder wheels for the painted ones. Again, at this stage, the car was looking great. One thing I wanted to address though was the red wires and white body mounts being visible under the car. The FPU C1 chassis sits very low, which is great for fitting a full depth interior, but on this car, there's a lot visible on either side. To help with this, I painted some of the wires and body mounts flat black.
In addition to that, I wanted to add some tailpipes to the car. I painted the ends of the exhaust that came with the kit and then glued each to the body. Very simple, but adds just a little bit of extra detail. The wheels I have on the car right now are great for functionality and ease of service, but lack a knockoff spinner like a full-size wire wheel would have. To present an alternative to the customer for static display purposes, I modified the wire wheels that were included with the kit to fit the car. Not only do they look awesome, but they extend further beyond the body, like on the movie car. Although you could glue the wheels on permanently like I did with the Challenger I built a while back, I prefer to have the car more serviceable with easily removable wheels, especially for a commission build. I think having these set up as static display wheels is a nice compromise. There's just one last thing to do. I wanted to cover this hole in the rear seat, which I needed to make for the gears. Keeping with the theme, we decided a nice big boombox would look pretty cool in the back seat. I needed to make this boombox quite large to cover the opening, but I don't think it's too crazy big to the point of looking out of place. I designed it using Autodesk Fusion 360 and printed it using an SLA 3D printer. I hand painted it black with some silver details. I will be posting the STL file for this boombox on the Patreon for anyone who's interested in printing one. We might add it to our shop as well. If anyone is interested in ordering one, please feel free to send us a message. It turned out looking pretty good, so I glued it to the back seat. It's definitely much better than having a random hole in the back, that's for sure. At this point the car is complete, and man it turned out awesome. I'm a big fan of the Fox Body Mustangs, so this build was especially fun to do. Although I'm not sure if green would be my first choice for one of these cars, the more I look at it, the more I like it. It's also a notable build for me personally, as this is the first full depth interior convertible that I've built. Of course looks is just part of the equation, I had to find out how it drives, and the answer is great. Nothing really too special, it turns sharp and is pretty quick if you really give it some throttle. Obviously this car is more of a cruiser than a race car, but regardless, it's fun to blast around the track. Of course I don't want to hoon this car around too much, as this is a commission build and I don't want to wreck that awesome looking body. So I'm going to wrap this video up right here. 
an all around awesome build that I really enjoyed making and I hope you all enjoyed watching. Don't forget to check out the links below in the description if you'd like to do a similar build, and if you want to help support this channel and get yourself access to exclusive perks, as well as make more content like this possible, consider becoming a member on Patreon linked below or a channel member by clicking the join button. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you next time.